Today's video is a really quick tip on how you can take any 2D black and white image that you have and convert that into a 3D mesh by using geometry nodes. It's a really simple setup and it's going to be really quick. So let's learn. In your default scene, you're going to bring your cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag up to create a new window, and we're going to change that to the geometry node editor. Now here, we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, and we're going to select the group input and press X to delete it. Now essentially, all we're going to do is create a plane and remove parts of the image to form the mesh. So I'll press shift A and search for a grid node and plug that into the group output. And then I'll change the X and the Y to something a bit larger, maybe five meters to act as the base plane. Now we need this to have a really high resolution. So to control the resolution, I'll change the vertices on the X and the Y to 100. And then to get even more resolution, I'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a subdivide mesh node and plug that in after the grid. Now, if you actually switch on wireframe by pressing this button, you can see how dense the mesh is. And essentially, this is the lowest resolution that you'll get or the highest resolution that you'll get. So we'll change the levels to two to get it even finer and maybe even three to make it super fine so that it looks really smooth when we actually apply the rest of the modifiers. But to help make things a bit faster, we'll keep the levels down at one. And just before rendering, we'll level it up to three. Now, what we want to do is we want to delete geometry based on the 2D image that you have. So I'll press shift A and search for a delete geometry node and plug that in after the subdivide mesh node. And now we have to choose the selection according to the image texture. So I'll press shift A and search for an image texture. And then I'll open the image that we have. So press this button and find your image. Now I have this black and white image. So I'll just open it and plug that into the selection. Now, obviously that does something, but it's not exactly what we want to see the actual plane better. We'll switch back to our object mode. And this is what it seems like. There's a lot of detail present, which we may or may not want. So the first thing that you can do is search for a greater than node or a compare node, and then plug this in between the image texture and the selection, and then just increase the value by a little bit. And you can start seeing that you get more control over which portion are deleted and which portions aren't. Next, if you actually want this dragon to be there and the rest to not be there, you have to change this greater than to less than. So remember, if your image is white on a black background, you have to change this to less than some value. So maybe I'll go with the value of 0.1. If your image is a white image on a black background, you do this. If your image is a black image on a white background, then you have to change this to greater than and that way the background will get deleted. So in this case, because we want the black portions to be present and our background was white, we're going to change this to less than and we get our dragons. However, the problem is there are far too many dragons. So we first have to fix the actual vector input for the image texture. To do that, we'll press shift A and search for a position node and we'll plug the position into the vector and we're going to use three vector math nodes. The first vector math node is going to be an add node and this is going to control the actual position on the X and the Y axis. So as you can see by shifting the X axis, you can actually position your image exactly where you want it to be on both the X and the Y by playing around with these. However, for my situation, I'm going to select both of them and make them 0.5 so that the dragons come to the absolute center. The next vector math node that we want is going to be a scale node. So we search for a vector math node and change it from add to scale. And this is what's going to actually scale the image up or down. So we don't want this many repeating dragons. We want only one. So what we do is just reduce the scale until only the central dragon is present. Now, of course, if you don't want it to be this precise and you don't want these other dragons to start coming in, what you can do is change this image texture from repeat to clip. And that way, only the single central dragon will be there, even if you scale it up and make it small. So that way you have a little bit more control. Now the next thing is going to be another vector math node, which is going to be multiply. So we can take this add node, press shift D and plug it in here and change this from add to multiply. And this is essentially going to control the aspect ratio. So for now, because we have a square image, one and one makes perfect sense. But let's suppose our image was not square. So let's open a new image. And this image is not in the square aspect ratio. So to fix that, you first have to find out the dimensions of the original image. So open the folder in which you've stored it, select the image, right click and go to the properties. And under the details tab, you'll be able to see the height and the width. So in this case, I have 2500 and 676. Now I'm going to take a calculator and type down 2500 divided by 676. And we get some value. So in this case, it's 3.698, which I can round off to 3.7. So what we have to do is on this multiply node, figure out which one has to be squashed. So it has to be squashed on the y axis. So we write down that number 3.69 or 3.7 on the y axis. And this is the original aspect ratio. And that's how we can do this for images that are not square. So this setup allows us to use any image of any size. Now let's go back to our dragon, change the aspect ratio back to one and then continue with the rest of the tutorial. So right now we just have a 
plane, but we want this to actually be in three dimensions. So for that, we have to actually extrude this. So press shift and search for an extrude mesh node. And before we actually plug it in, we'll just uncheck individual and we'll reduce the offset scale to something smaller, maybe 0.2. Then we can simply plug this right after the delete geometry and we get this to extrude up. If we had individual checked, you'd get many more faces present in between these nodes or these vertices, which actually takes a little bit more computational time, especially when you have the grid very, very high. So keep individual unchecked. Next, we don't want the actual back to be a hole. We want the back to also have a face. So to do that, we press shift and search for a join geometry, plug that in after the extrude mesh. And we need to take this geometry and plug it into the join geometry. However, as I've explained in multiple previous videos, the normals are flipped, which means the normal for this particular face is pointed inward. And that way, if you have certain shaders that depend on the normal or you have a mesh to volume node, they won't work too well. You can switch on back face culling and you'll see that the back face is not seen. So that's why you have to actually flip the faces. So press shift and search for a flip faces node and plug that in in between the delete geometry and the join geometry. So that way, even with back face culling on, you see the normals are faced correctly. Now you can switch off back face culling and move on to just increasing the subdivide mesh node to so go up to a value of three and you can see how smooth it becomes. Once you have this done, you can press shift a and search for a set material node plug that in after the run join geometry select whichever material you want and you're pretty much done with the tutorial use this in your scene however you please i decided to split this out into an individual video because many people might require just this particular knowledge to help them create various animations however i actually am going to be using this particular process in tomorrow's video where i use simulation nodes to actually reveal another logo so if you liked this one i'm very sure you will like that one as well it'll involve a little bit more math and I really hope you learned something. If you found this video helpful, there are a lot of other tips and tricks on my channel, which I'm sure you'll find useful as well. So be sure to check them out and I release videos every single day. So until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.